first step in installing the manifold on an Ico Dynaflex, we need to uh, remove the nut from this front roller bolt. Then we're going to loosen the hardware on our mount arm. Mount arm bolts in place through the back hole. And the height adjustment link fits onto the front hole. We're going to go ahead and we're going to snug up this hardware. And then we're going to insert the manifold arm with the saddle attached. This is on left hand end of the header. I'm going to install it in the front hole with the flip over reel. If you do not have the flip over reel, I'm going to put it in the second hole. ensure that's nice and straight with the reel arm and then we're going to go over and do the same thing on the right hand end of the header on the right hand end of the reel you'll have to remove this bolt here in order to install the manifold arm this bushing will be discarded on headers with flip over reel you will have to loosen off the clamp bolts on each side and rotate the cam forward in order to remove this bolt and to install the bolt for the reel arm once we have the reel cam out of the way, we're going to remove that bolt. Discard that bushing. install the link onto the front bolt same as we did on the other side of the header we're going to go ahead and tighten up all that hardware just our reel back into position Once we have the mount arm in place, I'm going to stick the manifold mount arm with the elbow. Again, this has a flip over reel, so we're going to use the first hole, second hole in the arm. We're going to secure that in place. We're going to ensure that our arm is square to our reel arm and lock the set skirt. Your AWS manifold it will be labeled with the model of header as well as end cap, which is the left hand side and the elbow end, which is the right hand end in this case. Each manifold is drilled and built for each model of head, so they're not as interchangeable on some models. What we're going to do is on the end cap end, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick our end cap over the end of the manifold. and tap it in place before we set it on the, the header. We have to remove the saddle assembly from the end cap end. Then we're going to position the manifold into the lock sleeve and then into position on the end cap end. With the manifold in place, we're going to install our top saddle again. First we'll install it without any washers. We want to make sure 
that our manifold can still rotate in the saddle. If it binds up, if it's a little too tight, take one of the washers, put it under the spacer. Each nozzle gets a foam gasket placed on the, on the inlet. It is held in place with a U-bolt and two quarter inch lock nuts. Fit the nozzle over the hole. Run the nuts up with an impact if you wish or a better yet a cordless drill with a 7 16 socket run them up and then torque them to nine foot pounds before we put our lock sleeve bushing into our lock sleeve reach inside make sure the manifold is fully seated into the lock sleeve to the end of the larger diameter if you find it's binding just loosen these two screws give it a wiggle pull it in place and then tighten them back down to install the lock sleeve bushing, we're going to rotate our manifold so that it is fully engaged into the reel. We're going to mark the position three quarters of an inch from the root of the lock sleeve bushing. We're going to drill a 3 8 hole and secure it with a 3 8 bolt and lock nut. This allows the manifold to be rotated away from the reel and popped out, much like a taillight bulb. Then we're going to secure it with a 3 8 bolt and lock nut to the outside. Once you have the end cap and the manifold in place, we're going to open up the electrical kit, find our electric actuator, stick it in place. Our, our end cap has not been tightened to the manifold. actuators come fully extended with a 90 degree angle we're going to lock this in place and then we're going to position our manifold at the tips hitting our bats in between our wheel fingers and then we're going to go ahead we're going to lock the end cap to the manifold with the clamp bolt and then we're going to stick two self-drilling screws into the manifold Next step is to install our transition tube with the decal. You'll need an 875 hose clamp, which can be identified by the part number. There will be two 825s, which are for the flex hose, and one 8.75 hose clamp, which is for the elbow. Fit the hose clamp over the elbow. Then we insert our transition tube with the decal to the outside, of course. Hold it parallel to the reel drive shield and secure the hose clamp. Once our transition tube is installed, we remove the protective wrap from the AWS decal. Then we attach it to the manifold reel arm with the adjusting link bolt and secure it with a U-bolt, two lock nuts, then we tighten our clamp in place. In order to transition the hose nicely from the fan, we install a 45 degree elbow assembly onto the fan. We install an 875 clamp onto the rubber elbow. You may want to put a little lubrication, a little oil in here just to fit this uh, elbow onto the fan. Direct it out to the 
edge of the header and tighten in place. The next step we're going to put the hose onto the 45 elbow with an 825 clamp. We always position the hose clamps in a way that the exposed threads are hanging down to avoid them from trapping leaves and plant debris and having it hang on the ends of the bolts. Now this hose seems to be a little long. We're going to cut it to length so that we have a nice straight transition here to our transition tube. We want to cut about six inches off of this hose. And then I suggest not using side cutters to cut this wire because it is very, very hard. I would suggest using the wire cutters on a pair of vice grips or a pair of bolt cutters. Fit that into place. We've got a nice straight flow. When we have air pressure in there, it's going to be nice and straight. No, no kinks cutting off the airflow. Again, we're going to install our hose clamp with the exposed thread pointing downward. Once you have the system up and running, you want to just take a look, make sure that this hose isn't bending in a weird fashion that's kinking off the air. Run your reel fore and aft. Most often you're only going to use the last six inches, the rear six inches of travel, but you want to ensure that it's not going to contact the reel or rub on anything when it's under pressure. If it is, loosen this hose clamp and rotate it uh, and that will change the way the hose lays.